Dear students, in this video, I will explain instrumentation and applications of fluorimetry. So let's start. Fluorimeter consists of a radiation source which will emit radiations. Next is a lens which is collimating convex lens which will collect the radiations emitted by source and focus it towards the excitation filter. Excitation filter will absorb visible radiations and only UV radiations are allowed to pass. Next is focusing lens which focus the UV radiations towards the sample cell. Sample cell hold the sample. The next part of instrument is at 90 degrees to the radiation source and it is lens emission filter and another lens. Emission filter absorb UV radiations and only visible radiations are passed towards the detector. The detector is present at the end which measure the intensity of light. Now radiation source gives the mixture of UV and visible radiations. Excitation filter will absorb visible radiation and only UV radiations are allowed to pass towards the sample. In the sample, few radiations are absorbed and few radiations are transmitted from the sample. Now due to absorption of UV radiation, sample get excited and it will start fluorescing. The fluorescence light will pass towards the emission filter and emission filter will absorb UV radiation and only visible radiations are allowed to pass towards the detector. Visible radiations will hit the surface of detector and detector will measure the intensity of light. Now the uh, detector is kept at 90 degrees to the radiation source because if it is kept in the straight line that is at 180 degrees the transmitted light will interfere with the fluorescence light and we will get wrong result. To avoid this interference, detector is kept at 90 degrees to the radiation source. Now we'll see the instrumentation in detail. The main parts of instrument are radiation source, filters and monochromators, sample cell and detectors. Now radiation source. Many radiation source are available. First is mercury arc, second is xenon arc. And next is tungsten lamp. Now mercury arc or mercury vapor lamp. Mercury vapor lamp at high pressure gives intense line spectra above 350 nanometer. That means in the visible range it will give line spectra. At low pressure it gives additional lines at 254 nanometer. It gives a mixture of UV and visible radiations. This is mercury arc lamp. Next is xenon arc. It gives more intense radiations than mercury vapor lamp. The spectrum is continuous over the range between 250 to 600 nanometer. The peak intensity is about 470 nanometer. Now it is a expensive lamp. Generally it is used in spectrofluorometer. The advantage of this lamp is it gives continuous spectra. This is xenon arc lamp. Next one is tungsten lamp. It is used in low cost instruments. It, the intensity of lamp is low. It gives visible radiations. The inten, uh, intensity of UV radiations is weak. Next is filters and monochromators. Filters work on the principle of absorption of unwanted radiations and transmitting the required wavelength of light. Now such filters are known as absorption filters. Now filters are used in inexpensive instrument. Prime, there are two types of filters. Primary filters which absorb visible radiation and transmit UV radiations. And secondary filter which absorb UV radiation and transmit visible radiations. Now such type of filters are present in a fluorimeter. Next is monochromators. They convert polychromatic light into 
monochromatic light. They can isolate a specific range of wavelength or particular wavelength of radiation from a source. Excitation monochromator can isolate only the radiation which is absorbed by the molecule. Emission monochromator which can isolate only the radiation emitted by the molecule. Now mono monochromators are more sensitive, they are more effective than the filters and monochromators are used in expensive instruments like uh, spectrofluorometer. This is the overall diagram of fluorometer which consists of excitation and emission monochromator. Next is sample cell. Majority of fluorescence assay are carried out in solution form. Sample cell is used to hold the liquid samples. These are made up of either quartz or silica or glass. They are of various types like cylindrical or rectangular etc. Generally the path length is 1 cm. So such type of sample cells are present are given with the fluorimeter. Next important part is detectors. Now detectors, photo, photometric detectors are used in fluorimeter like barrier layer cell or photovoltaic cell, photo tube, photomultiplier cell. Now these detectors are used in UV visible spectrophotometer also. So we'll see these detectors one by one. First is barrier layer cell. Barrier layer cell consists of a iron base plate, a selenium metal coated on the iron base plate. Selenium metal is a semiconducting metal and a gold layer is coated on the selenium layer. So three metal layers are present in barrier layer cell. Iron layer will act as uh, one electrode and gold layer will act as another electrode. Iron is a cathode and gold is an anode. So these two electrodes are connected through an external circuit. When radiations hit the surface of gold layer, the electrons will start generating in the interface of gold and selenium. And these electrons will start attracted towards the gold layer. Once these electrons are flowing towards the gold anode, the current will start flowing through the external circuit. And uh, the, this amount of current is measured by the galvanometer. Now the amount of current produced is directly proportional to the radiations hitting the detector. So this is a simple type of detector which is used in inexpensive instrument. Next one is phototube. Phototube consists of an evacuated glass bulb in which there is a half cylindrical metal cathode whose inner surface is coated with light sensitive layer of cesium or potassium or silver oxide. At, this is called as photocathode. A metal ring is present at the center of bulb which will act as anode. Now the, this cathode and anode they are connected with each other through the external circuit and an amplifier is attached to that. When light ray hit the surface of photocathode, photocathode will eject electrons and these electrons will get attracted towards the anode. And once this flow of electron is started, current will start flowing through the external circuit. Here also the amount of current is directly proportional to the light rays hitting to the photocathode. Next detector is photomultiplier tube. It consists of an evacuated tube which has a photoemissive cathode. There are 8 to 10 photoemissive dynodes which are at positive voltage uh, from each other. Each dynode is uh, 70 to 100 uh, volt higher than the previous dynode. It has a collector anode. A scintillation chamber is present. Now, when the light radiation strikes the surface of cathode, it, uh, it emits 2 to 5 electrons 
and these electrons are attracted towards first dynode and it emits 2 to 5 electrons for each streaking electron. Now that means the amount of electron increases from first dynode to second dynode and each dynode will increase the amount of electrons to, uh, towards the next dynode and finally the amount of the number of electron will increase and at the anode there will be a burst of electrons so anode will have burst of electron and the current flowing through cathode and anode will be in large amount this photomultiplier tube detector is most sensitive detector its response time is 10 raised to minus 9 seconds this is used in spect uh, spectrofluorometer. Now there are three types of fluorimeters, single beam fluorimeter, double beam fluorimeter and spectrofluorimeter which is a double beam instrument. Single beam fluorimeter we have already seen this ray diagram of single beam fluorimeter which has excitation and emission filter and only one sample holder is present. Here in single beam fluorimeter, the radiation source used is tungsten lamp, primary and secondary filters are used here. In double beam fluorimeter, there are two sample holders present, one for reference and other for sample. A beam splitter is used which split the beam of radiation into two equal portions. One, one portion pass through the reference cell and other portion pass through the sample cell and both fall on the detector. Spectrofluorometer which is a double beam instrument. The difference in the double beam uh, fluorometer and spectrofluorometer is that here in spectrofluorometer excitation and emission monochromators are used instead of filters. So this is the overall ray diagram of spectrofluorometer. Spectrofluorometer is most advanced and sophisticated instrument, most accurate also. Now applications of fluorimetry. Direct fluorimetry is the first application. The compounds which are actually fluor naturally fluorescent are easily determined at very low concentration by the simple fluorimetric method. For example, phenobarbit phenobarbitone, quinine, imidine, adrenaline, synchonine, reserpine, vitamin A, riboflavin, and other natural compounds can be these compounds can be directly analyzed indirect methods are also available for non fluorescent mm -hmm. compounds non fluorescent substance can be determined by chemical reactions inorganic for example inorganic ions can be determined either by formation of fluorescent chelate on reaction with fluorimetric reagents for example, aluminium reacts with 8-hydroxyquinoline to give fluorescent chelate. Zinc reacts with benzoin to give fluorescent chelate. Or zirconium reacts with flavanol to give fluorescent chelate. This is first indirect method. Another one is that by measuring the quenching of fluorescence of fluorescent substance in the presence of some ion. Next applications are spectrofluorometer is widely used in pharmaceutical analysis particularly for the assay of high potent drugs present in tiny amounts. Next is determination of naphthol proteins, plant pigments and steroids. Next application of fluorimetry is determination of ruthenium ions in presence of platinum metals. Determination of boron in presence of steel in the steel, aluminium, uh, these are the next applications. Fluorescence indicators are widely used in titrations. For example, eosine, whose endpoint is colorless to green, fluorosine, quinine sulfate, and acridine. These are the fluorescent indicators which are widely used. I hope you understood all these concepts. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you very much.